morning, families and friends of the United Methodist Church of Le Grand Kankama. It's a beautiful day outside, but even before you go out, thank you for joining our online service this morning. We celebrate this Holy Sabbath as Trinity Sunday as well as Communion Sunday. Let us put our hearts, minds, and the spirits together and worship the Lord. We begin with an opening hymn, Christ, whose glory fills the skies. Hymnal number 173. Our triune God is always with us and is ready to hear, shield, reshape, and reform us. Let us humbly come to the Holy Trinity and confess our sins and ask for God's transforming power. Let us pray together. Triune God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, you created us in your own image and breathed your Spirit into us. Therefore, each and every one of us is a carrier of your image and your Spirit. All of us are so precious and equal in your eyes, and you love all of us. If we follow your creation purpose and your good example, in spite of our differences, we should be one in your true community. However, we confess that we fail to do so. As we see and experience the world of racism, discrimination, and injustice these days throughout our nation and our world, we should feel shame embarrassment, and guilt. The death of George Floyd happened to be on the surface and triggered our country this time. However, so many people of color and minorities have been treated unjustly and unfairly every day. Lord, during this chaotic and tense time, appear to us in forms we can't escape anymore challenge us in ways we can't avoid, and lead us to the right path to reform our human world and the healing of your whole creation. Amen. Let us have a moment of a silent meditation and a prayer. Hear the words of assurance. Our gracious Lord listens to our cry and sees our tears and sends the Holy Spirit to comfort us, heal us, and empower us. God's love is unconditional, just, and fair. 
Let us behave and live as the followers of Jesus Christ, who are lifted up and chosen as God's people, who will always be made new in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's special anthem, We Thy People Praise Thee, will be dedicated by Deborah and Rex Andelin. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah and Rex. Your music always touches our hearts and stimulates our spirit. Thank you. Children's message will be delivered by Sue Prattis this morning. Sue? Hello, children. It's June. Time to celebrate the end of a very strange school year. I know you've been continuing with your studies online and your teachers have been working very hard to stay connected. Your Sunday school teachers and church family have missed being together with you. We are fortunate to have technology that allows us to see each other in cyberspace. I would like to read you a passage from the Bible this morning. It's from Matthew verses 19 through 20, chapter 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The disciples in Jesus' time were charged with spreading the teaching of Jesus forming the church and reaching people from all nations. How did they do that? 
They did not have technology to help them. They did it with God's help. Jesus' teachings and the Holy Spirit in them. Jesus said, and remember, I am always with you. The Holy Spirit is in all of us so we can be disciples. When the early church was forming, the Holy Spirit guided the leaders and the people. The leaders wrote letters. They gave instructions and encouragement to the followers. We have some of those letters in our Bible. Your Sunday school teachers will be writing you a letter soon asking how you are aware of God in your life. Look around for signs, beautiful nature, loving family and friends. You will be invited to write or draw a picture and share with them. I hope you write back to them so that we can all be connected and share. That is the beginning of being a good disciple. Let us pray. God, thank you for always being with us. Help us be aware and grateful of God's presence in our life so that we can be good disciples for your church. Amen. Thank you, Sue. As the chairperson of Education Committee, you have a lot on your plate. But we deeply appreciate your commitment and your dedication. Thank you. It is time for us to lift up our prayers and concerns and to share our joys. Let's start from our big joy. Bobby Clark, the eldest member of our church, will be celebrating her 96th birthday tomorrow, Monday, June 8th. Wow, unbelievable. 96 years of a healthy and happy life. Congratulations, Bobby. And uh, you know, currently she lives in a, a nursing home, but we'll send her cards and make her happy. And we are very happy that she hit 96th birthday. Praise the Lord. And uh, we have a couple of uh, prayer requests. Last Wednesday, Carl Wright had a blood clot in his leg and had to go to the St. Catherine's Hospital. And he's home and he's stabilized, but let's continue to pray for Carl and his wife, Liza. Also, please remember Ilona Toraka uh, in your thoughts and prayers. She is uh, still at South Oak Hospital and shows not much improvement to return home yet. So she needs our encouragement through our prayers. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, we come before you with our heavy hearts this morning. We are grateful that we are just about to come out of the COVID-19 quarantine period and reopen the stage one businesses. However, we are now facing another enormous wave of the nationwide movement against the systematic racism and the police brutality. It's so much to bear and we don't know where to turn. But, oh Lord, you know the exact timing of all events and you know the purposes of all happenings. Help us to open our hearts so that we may hear your voice in unexpected times and places and we find ways we can change, improve, and reform. Lord, we all are hurt, wounded, and tired physically, emotionally, and spiritually. May the Holy Spirit come and sort things out provide us wisdom, and guide us to the reconciliation. Racism is not something in your mind when you created all humans equally, but we've made our own scale of judging people 
and treat each other unjustly and unfairly. That's not right. Lord, this time, the evil of racism should be eradicated from our hearts, societies, communities, and the world, but help us to fight it peacefully and rationally. We pray for all of us, especially all those people who are in pain and suffering due to the racism pandemic and the COVID-19 pandemic. We are desperate, Lord. Have mercy on us. Please awake us, help us, and guide us. Therefore, your vision for a peaceful world may become our vision. With the sincere desires and hopes, we implore to Jesus Christ, our Lord and the Savior. Amen. Today's lecture is Andrew Sinclair, and he will read today's scripture lessons. Good morning. The epistle this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And the gospel this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today is Trinity Sunday, and it is very appropriate to greet you in all three names. However, if I ask you to explain about Trinity, can you tell me what it is? Just to tell me as much as you know. I know that it's not that easy. Whenever I think of a Trinity, it always brings me back to the theology classes in my seminary days. Even though it's more than three decades ago, the memory is still vivid. Why? Because the subject matter of a Trinity is so complicated to understand and even we seminarians would struggle to grasp the full meaning. So we often said and heard that deny the doctrine of the Trinity and you will lose your salvation, but try to comprehend it, you will lose your mind. It's so true. The problem is that the Bible itself doesn't explain or lay it out with a clear delineation and a definition. The word Trinity doesn't even appear in the scripture. I remember that when I was a kid. In Sunday school, I had heard the analogy of a Trinity as water, H2O. Water can be a steam, an ice, a liquid, but their substances are all the same at the molecular level. Or the teachers compared the Trinity as a shamrock, three clover leaves in one stem, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all three in one stem. I am certain that many of you heard the same. 
However, in my theology class in seminary, I realized that what we learned about the Trinity that way was totally wrong. It is called modalism. Modalism, if you go to Google, there are so many videos and lectures to explain it, which even make you more confused. To make it short, modalism is the view that the three members of the Trinity are different modes or roles of God's activity as he relates to creation at different times. It's a heresy, of course. Well, even though you don't fully understand it, don't worry about it now. It takes a lot of time and energy to understand the full concept anyway. There are too many claims, theories, doctrines, philosophies, and concepts about Trinity, but there's the common ground among them. It doesn't matter which theological doctrine you stand, all three persons have a balanced, harmonious, and unified relationship among themselves. Therefore, rather than focusing on each one individually, we always have to focus on the real essence of the Trinity, the power of relationship among Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The important point is that God's very nature, God's being, God's focus is internally and externally relational, and our relationship with God and with each other should be the same as the relationship among three persons in one person. A balanced, unified, and harmonious image of Trinity inspired many early church fathers, and their thoughts have been inherited to us throughout the Christian history. One of them is John of Damascus, who lived during the late 7th and early 8th centuries, and he came up with a term for the oneness and the threeness of God as perichoresis. Perichoresis in Greek, peri, P-E-R-I, means circle. And choresis, C-H-O-R-E-S-I-S, -E means dance. The Trinity is an eternal circle dance of a Father, Son, and Spirit sharing mutual love, honor, happiness, joy, and respect. This theology, this doctrine is my favorite one. Can you imagine God is dancing as a circle? Can you feel three persons' flawless movements? The image of perichoresis naturally stimulates my whole being to move according to the heavens' melodies and the rhythms and urges me to dance, dance with God and dance with the people. And this joy makes me invite my family and friends to join the dancing circle because it's so good and beautiful. It's a dynamic circle, energetic community defined by God's love, grace, and peace. In the community of perichoresis is to dance with all, being invited into the circle and into a love relationship where we see God face to face as children hold hands and dance with loving parents. It's like a heaven on earth. That's the true image of Trinity. I think that explaining the concept of Trinity with the words has limitations. Very often we feel that the words can't describe all. The only way we will really get the Trinity is to join the circle and live into that relationship. 
through that experience, we feel and understand the true definition and concept of a Trinity. Still, it's easy to say, but hard to practice. How well we know that God created us in his own image all equally and love all of us. There's no more love or less love for the particular creatures and certain groups. God has invited all of us to the faith community of the triune God to dance together. When we live a harmonious life together, it's the best way to explain the Trinity, the core of our Christian doctrine. So, friends, how are we doing with this image of Trinity in our real life? Is everyone invited? Are we getting along well to dance together? Are we all inside the circle? No one outside? Did we check? Unfortunately and sadly, the current situation in our country doesn't accord with this image, particularly with the racism. As you know well, the recent death of George Floyd triggered our country and the racism pandemic came on the surface. We may hear this. It's horrible that an innocent black man was killed, but destroying property and looting must be stopped. But we should say this. It's horrible that property is being destroyed, but killing innocent black men must be stopped now. It's a note from unnamed person. Church, the people of color are outside the circle and most of them are excluded. We are so comfortable with ourselves and forgot to invite others to our dance circle. Let's see our church. Predominantly the white folks in a very comfortable community. I think that we are, I mean, we think that we are doing well with the racism. But what have we done specifically for being an inclusive church? Can we confidently respond to that question? Let me challenge you, including me, what did we do to invite and truly share the triune God's blessing with outsiders, marginalized, and living in the edges. Recently, as the demonstrations against the pandemic racism are going on, I've reflected again on my past life. When I was in college, 1983, my family used to own a medium-sized regular supermarket in Astoria, Queens, nearby LaGuardia Airport. It was just uh, before Thanksgiving holiday and a couple of uh, cashiers didn't want to work uh, during the holiday and I was uh, one of the substitute cashiers that day. In that evening, two African-American guys came to the store and robbed us. I happened to be the one at that particular cashier station and the gun was pointed at my head. Luckily, they didn't shoot me or any of us in the store. They took just a lot of money. Immediately after they left, my legs loosened and I collapsed. Can you imagine the fear and anxiety I had then? Honestly, I couldn't get over that trauma for a while. Whenever I saw any African Americans, my heart was racing with fear. Then, 
it came to my mind one day that I can't live like this. I only had two choices. Either I live with this fear and anger in my heart and live with the racism forever, or I get rid of the racism by confronting and fighting it directly. To make, it, to make a long story short, I chose the second option. I was brave enough to move into a 99% African American community in Queens and lived in that community more than a decade, even after I finished seminary. I used to call my territory the Trinity Zone. As an Asian American woman, Living with a white Anglo-American woman, she was my adopted American mother, in the African-American community. It took me a long time and intentional effort to fight against the racism in me. I'm not sharing this painful experience with you to get your sympathy and attention, no. That's not my intention. I don't want to talk about the racism easily and uh, take it lightly. Honestly, I am still struggling. How can I embrace all without prejudice and uh, prejudgment, without fear, frustration, and anger? During this COVID-19 uh, quarantine period, Many Asians were randomly targeted and attacked because the coronavirus came from China. Many innocent Asian American people were harmed and injured. The warnings were going around in the Asian American communities to be extra careful. I am grateful to our church that you accepted me, a Korean American woman, as your spiritual leader. Thank you. However, on the other hand, believe it or not, a few families of people of color have left our church because they experienced the subtle racism in our parish. You probably don't even know what you've done to them, and you probably don't know what I am saying, what I'm talking about. Friends, we all needed to wake up. Even though we don't like it, we have to force ourselves to the reality. A half a century has passed since the civil rights movement. But what have we accomplished regarding the racism? These days, I feel as though our American history is moving backward not forward. Brothers and sisters in Trinity community, in order to create and practice triune God's perical racist community, what should we do? We like it or not, you and I are called to form a dancing circle, truly include all God's people. What can we do? I need your help and cooperation. I give each and every one of us the assignment. What should we do to be the community of the Holy Trinity? First of all, we should repent. Let's repent, pray about it, share it, and act on it. Amen. Now, let's sing the hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, hymnal number 64, verses 1 through 3.
Let us prepare ourselves to receive the Holy Communion. Please set your table with the elements, bread or crackers, wine or grape juice. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and the resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with the Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them before us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one wolf, we who are many, are one body for all who partake of the one wolf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is your sharing in the blood of Christ. Please take a piece of bread or have cracker. The body of Christ is given for you. Please take wine or grape juice. The blood of Christ given for you. Let us lift up the prayer of thanksgiving. We pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join with me, hymn number 624, Bread of the World.
Let us pray. People of God, in the Holy Trinity, we are one body, united and uniting. Varied gifts and justified hearts are preparing us for service. We have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us dare to speak the justice and act as inspired people. Go to the world and preach the gospel with our words and deeds. Go in peace and bring peace to the world. Amen. I have a few announcements to make. First of all, I'd like to express my deep gratitude to Charlie Bonshine. Thank you, Charlie, for setting up a communion table for our cyber services. And uh, July and August Upper Room magazines are here and available. So if you need one, please let me know. If you know of anyone needing emergency food or clothing, please call the church office at 631-588-5856. And there is an urgent need for healthy blood donors like you. To schedule an appointment, go to www.nybc.org. Org, or call 800-933-2566. Nettie Baker Sunday is next Sunday. And to donate flowers for Nettie Baker Sunday, a table will be set up in front of a Hurtling Hall for your flowers this Friday, June 12th, between 3 to 6 p.m. Once again, this Friday, June 12th, between 3 to 6 p.m. Or send your monetary donation to church, UMCLR, 792 Hawkins Avenue, Lake Grove, New York, 11755. Please specify Nettie Baker flowers on your check. Heather Edwards Wilson would like everyone to send the pictures of their gardens, selfies of them in the garden, or just the photos of flowers to be used in the children's anthem on Nettie Baker Sunday. So you don't have enough time, please hurry up to send the pictures to uh, um, Heather. Uh, her email address is melody8h at gmail.com or to the church office, umclr at verizon.net. Rex has the updates for the auction. Rex? Thank you, Pastor. It's just three months to a grand fall auction. This auction doesn't happen automatically. It must be built from scratch every year. We need inventory now. Please search and find those wonderful items. Put them on your pledge sheet. That pledge sheet is found on the website. And mail it or email it to the church. Thank you. Thank you, Rex. For more auction information, please go to our church website, www.umclr.com. Scroll down to the bottom right and click on 2020 Grand Fall Auction. Get the latest catalog update and view some of the donated items to be auctioned on Saturday, September 12th at 12 noon. My beloved congregation, we are going to have a special service for Nettie Baker Day. Please join us next Sunday and have a blessed week and see you next Sunday. Shalom to you. So long.